All right, and now we construct a molecule. So what I've got here is the two hybrid states that we constructed in the last video, um, superimposed on top of each other. So this black dot here is the beryllium nucleus. And so this is the two sp hybrids sort of superimposed on there. So they actually overlap. The green part in, so these two lobes, these are called, are part of the same hybrid. So the blue part here on the, on the left side and the green part here on the right side are, are the one hybrid. And the blue part here and the green part here are the other hybrid. But again, they've got the 180 degree orientation that you know hopefully is going to lead to something here. And now, if we were so inclined, okay, so we've got the right orientation here. And if we were so inclined, we could now start to think about overlapping um, electrons in these hybrid states with, let's say, the hydrogen valence electrons. So we bring up the hydrogen valence electrons. So right now they're not close enough to be interacting. There's actually like you know this white empty space in between them. But what we could do if we wanted if we wanted to make the, those two beryllium hydrogen single bonds. Is just bring them closer together, and so basically, mathematically, well, graphically, I should say, um, we just sort of smear them together, and we get a picture like this. So now we've got overlap here. Now we've got overlap here, and we've got bonds. Now both of the so the bonds because of the orientation of the hybrid orbitals or the hybrid states i should say being 180 degrees away from each other that makes the two beryllium hydrogen bonds also 180 degrees apart matching what the known structure of that is and they are identical because they are both the result of beryllium sp hydrogen 1s overlap And so our bonding theory now agrees with the experimentally determined structures. So we had to construct these more elaborate states for the electrons, but we can do it. And this is what hybridization is. Okay, so these hybrid states, what, uh, what you need to know is that, so why didn't we tell you about these before? Well, because we didn't need to. The electron states that we showed you before, you know, the 3D, um, 5F, 2S, whatever, are a bunch of lowest energy solutions. These hybrid states have energies that end up being intermediate between the energies of the original unhybridized atomic orbitals or states, I should say. And you, so you don't see these hybrid states until you need to make a molecule. Um, because if you're looking at just an electron, this is not an issue, and the electrons will adopt the states that we talked about before. But, um, because Mother Nature is lazy. But as soon as you start to make molecules, it's actually the energy of the molecule that is the deciding factor, because, you know, Mother Nature is still lazy. And so what this is saying is, you know, from a molecular standpoint, this geometry is better than, let's say, the is lower in energy than the 90 degree geometry that we would, for example, that we would have gotten if we you know, had just used, if we made the bonds from hydrogen 1s, beryllium 2p overlap. Um, so even though those electron states are a little higher in energy, it allows the molecule to, an adopt, to adopt a lower energy geometry and is better overall. So hybrids allow the molecules to adopt their lowest, ener their lowest energy geometry, which is defined as the one that keeps these electron domains as far away from each other as possible. So when there aren't bonds, this isn't a problem. But when there are bonds, this is something you need to think about. And these hybrid states are actually the ones that seem to be the way to go. All right, um, the next video, that was, this was a quick one. The next video, we're gonna talk about um, 
what happens when you need to make more than two bonds.